we will go ahead and get started. And I'm going to kind of control the slides, but I will introduce a very important and very special guest, our Dean and um, the, the President of Health Affairs and FAU Health, uh, Dr. Julie Politsis. Thanks so much, Dr. Drowes, and thanks for arranging this, and most especially thanks to those of you that could make it tonight. We wanted to talk to you about what's going on in the College of Medicine. Um, it's really important for us uh, not just to look within the walls of our um, institution, but to look outside and to see all the great things that you all are doing, and just have this dialogue back and forth about how we can be better partners. Um, so thanks again for for uh, coming and we'll be recording this for those of you, uh, if you know people that couldn't make it, just to let them know a little bit about the landscape of what's going on. Next slide, please. So first and foremost, um, we wouldn't be us without all of you. And, um, you know, as of today, uh, Stephanie told me we have 1,321 affiliate faculty that are involved in so many things we do. We have so many hospital partners, um, ever expanding uh, for our GME partnerships, as well as um, for our UME partnerships. So um, we know uh, that we are part of this community, but we are a small part compared to everything that you all bring to the table. Next slide. Uh, so just a little bit of an agenda for tonight. I'm going to give um, the, the welcome that I already did and talk about an introduction about what we've done this year. Then I'll turn it over to Dr. Drowis to speak about faculty affairs and community engagement. Uh, Dr. Suzanne Bertolo will then speak about student affairs and curriculum. For those of you that don't know Dr. Bertolo, uh, she is now in charge of our UME, and um, she has extensive background uh, in this and actually was brought on to do just this, but then COVID hit and we had rearranged the deck chairs, so now she is in the role where she was meant to be, and though she's uh, been in the role for a short amount of time, it has been a true pleasure, and I'm so impressed with everything she's done. And then we'll wrap up with Scott Alter, who many of you know, and really has done something phenomenal, I think, for all of us, and especially the residents, the students, and the affiliates, and trying to streamline this um, amorphous uh, clinical research enterprise we have and how we can get involved in trying to figure out how we do this across different entities. So um, excited to turn it over over to my team after we summarize some of the great accomplishments from COM this year. Next slide. Uh, we had the opportunity, um, I, and many, I hope some of you received um, the uh, COM newsletter or Dean's letter that came out on May 18th, and um, we also had the opportunity to speak live about this, and um, I, I wanted to, I hope you'll open your email and to take a look at it, but I just wanted to talk about some of the high points of what we all have done this year together. Next slide. So um, it wouldn't be a year without mentioning our FAU uh, men's basketball team. It is such a pleasure to be able to go everywhere and to say I'm from Florida Atlantic and then have people know where that is. And, you know, we we um, we actually uh, got the equivalent in one point nine billion dollars in marketing revenue from making the final four. So, you know, clearly marketing that we couldn't buy and so excited that the team is all um, all returning this year and that we were able to keep Coach May and that we'll be able to increase the, the size of the, of the arena. Um, and, you know, I think uh, Interim President Volnick always talks about the fact that she was so impressed as she traveled with the team through this about what great students they were um, and how disciplined they were. And you all have known for a long time how special our students are. So um, on and off the court, we have aimed for excellence. Next slide. 
So um, one of the things uh, that, you know, as, as a dean or as, um, you know, a university president that you're evaluated on is metrics. Um, I know that when we talk about U.S. News and World Reports, it can be a bit controversial as to, you know, whether we should be looking at these or not. Uh, having said that, um, you know, I, I think it's um, really good to have an idea of where you are so that you can approve. So we actually took a close look at this and, and you know, this is actually my favorite accomplishment of the year. Um, and the, the reason is not because, um, you know, of the number and the fact that we were ranked for the first time, though I'm super excited about that. Um, but it's because this was something that we all did together and um, really worked very hard at and were very intentional about. And this gives us a starting point. And, you know, I, I think we're going to set an aspirational goal over the next three to five years to get up to like 85. And I think that would be a, a great metric. There's 172 medical schools um, in the ranking. And so 106 is really quite good for a medical school that's 11 years old. Next slide. Another big thing that we were able to do this year since uh, for the first time since the medical school was founded was that we were able to lobby the state legislature for additional funds for um, education. And so our budget had been stagnant and um, it, we get we have different pots of money. And so some of this comes from the GMB consortium, some comes from philanthropy. But when we're talking about state funds, that number had been stagnant and we were able to get five million in recurring dollars a year. And what that will allow us to do is a lot of the expansion um, that Dr. Bertolo and others will be talking to you about, as well as just making some critical investments in infrastructure and academic medicine. Next slide. So um, we've started uh, some of this expansion. Um, our, our goal is to increase our class sizes and our total number of medical students by over 60% um, over the coming years. So we've started construction on the Sim Center already, and we're hoping that's going to be done in two weeks. Uh, we're starting construction for a second auditorium at the College of Medicine um, next I think sometime this month, because we're trying to get the, the noisy work done. And, you know, then the building right next to the College of Medicine, which is OB1, uh, some of you might know that from having offices or where you've done some interviews, uh, that building is now becoming College of Medicine space as well. Um, we have some uh, fun and new other things also in that building. We're having a research MRI that is um, just getting installed as well as uh, down the road a bit, uh, a large animal facility. Um, we've started fundraising around these efforts, and we actually have our first donor, uh, Jane Klein, who has named um, the faculty hub in, uh, in the building. Next slide. And you know that leads us to philanthropy. Over the last 15 months, um, we have raised $42 million in philanthropy. Uh, many of you know about the big $28 million gift uh, towards um, the Doctors Without Debt. And you know that's an aspirational bequest gift, so we have a ways to go. Um, we have uh, just received another $12 million gift that you'll be hearing some details uh, about um, in the coming weeks. Um, and this involves um, programmatic growth, as well as um, our first department chair to have an endowed chair. Next slide. Well, it didn't touch March Madness, but um, our marketing team were the two um, busiest women I know and um, it just killed it with um, the getting us out on social media as well as marketing and in print. And um, we had the equivalent of 69 million in advertising value units. So an all time high in that regard as well. Um, Charlie Hennigans continues to be a, a prolific writer, and so actually our most cited um, and, and the our most cited paper and our a paper that got the most visibility was his work on um, processed foods. And you know to get to the conclusion of that paper, processed foods are not good for you. Um, it was featured in the New York Times. Next slide. 
Um, I mentioned the expansion. We have LCME approval to go to 80. We're going to go to a total of 104 the following year. So 80 this July, 104 next July. And we continue to do quite well with 93% of our med school graduates being satisfied with their education. Thank you all to all of you that participate in that. Next slide. Um, and here we have um, made some adjustments um, with uh, the departure of Sarah Wood for Harvard. Um, as I mentioned, Dr. Bertolo is now um, uh, in charge of undergraduate medical education. Mark DeCorsio is doing a hybrid role, kind of a little bit in educational affairs and some in admissions. Um, Michelle Lizette Wanuski is doing um, the first two years of med school with Jen Foster doing the third and fourth year. Lisa Martinez and Susie Weiner are helping direct the third and fourth year respected. Next slide. GME um, continue to have uh, great residency programs. Uh, for the first time in three years, we added some programs. We have two new uh, ACGMA fellowships, uh, one in uh, pulmonary critical care and one in um, a functional neurosurgery. We're hoping to add two more next year. And importantly, um, for over 40% of our graduates stay in Florida. So truly of the community for the community. Next slide, please. Um, and one of the things that sometimes we don't talk about as much is our graduate students. Uh, we have a lot of master's and PhD students, over 100. And so our master's program is uh, two years. Um, and our, then our PhD program is, you know, kind of however long it takes on average four or five years. Um, and so their graduation rates are high and they're going into STEM fields upon their graduation. We do have a post back program. So this is generally that transition time when you're trying to get into a medical school. And so all of our 20 students in the post back program, we're trying to get into med school. We have about a 50% success rate the first year. And then we keep with them the second year and about 50% of those go on to med school. So really amazing numbers considering, you know, that there's 100 applicants for each spot. Next slide. Um, as Scott will talk more to you about our research enterprise. Uh, clinical research is an increasing part of it. Um, we've had our largest research portfolio um, in the history of College of Medicine this year, 71 active awards totaling $31 million. We have multiple new clinical databases. We have a whole team of people and a 200% increase in the number of med students doing research at College of Medicine rather than looking outside it. Um, so really proud of this initiative and all Dr. Robichaud's hard work in getting us those databases. Next slide. And um, we worked really hard over this year uh, to be intentional about what we're doing. Um, you know, in order to know you've gotten someplace, it's important to have a strategic plan. So we've worked through this strategic plan and I have posted it on, on the website. So um, if of interest, uh, you can see our priorities and, and where we're headed. And we didn't just create this and, you know, put it in a box somewhere. We're actively, you know, weekly going through where we are with the strategic plan and moving forward. Next slide. I really just want to thank everybody. You know, this is um, a, a really exciting time uh, to be in South Florida and to be at the College of Medicine. And really, you know, our vision is to transform the way healthcare is delivered in South Florida and beyond with our community support. So um, thank you very much for your attention. And I will turn it over to Dr. Drowes. Thank you so much. I think um, it's just really exciting seeing all of that together in one place and hearing about um, all of our achievements. So thank you for you know being an amazing and inspiring leader and you know taking us uh, in in this great direction. So I'm going to shift a little bit. Um, I have been the faculty of Ferris Dean for the past couple of years and worked very closely with our community faculty, but I'm actually going to be transitioning. Um, away from that administrative role to, to focus more on my clinical practice, um, which is a little sad for me because I've loved working um, with the community faculty, but uh, I know that there are fabulous people who are stepping in and will do a fantastic job of keeping everything running 
in such a positive direction and moving forward. So Dr. Allison Ferris, she's our uh, program director for our internal medicine residency program and our chair of our medicine department. She is stepping up to be the assistant dean of faculty development. So she'll be you know, continuing all the work in planning activities and offering things to advance all of us as clinicians, as teachers, as academicians. And you know she's already done a ton of that this year. She'll be great in that role. Dr. Stuart Goldman, if you're part of the Teaching Academy, um, he's going to be stepping in and leading the Teaching Academy, which is really exciting. The Teaching Academy had a great year. We just welcomed another class. It's open for anybody who's interested in improving their teaching and, and cares about teaching. And I know he'll be a fantastic leader. He was the leader of the Teaching Academy at Boston Children's at Harvard for many years before he came down to FAU. So he's done this before. And I know, um, you know, he'll just be fantastic. And um, there will be a national search for a new faculty affairs dean in the future. But um, on an interim basis, we're hiring Dr. Michael Dobbs, who will be the chair of our clinical neurosciences department. He is phenomenal. We're so excited for him to join us in a couple of weeks. And he'll be in that role on an interim basis. And he'll have um, some support from, from Dr. Thorndike, who is a national expert in faculty affairs. So we're in great hands. And you know these are just some new faces and new people um, that you'll have the opportunity to get to know um, and to work with. So um, welcome to this presentation on behalf of myself um, and Stephanie Gabrielson, who's our amazing senior coordinator. And I know uh, that you probably deal with her quite a bit with you know, appointments and, and questions. We are always available um, and happy to connect with you and answer questions. I've put our, um, our contact information here. We just you know, always welcome hearing from you, you know, questions, anything that we can do to make your experience at the university uh, easier. And um, these are our new leaders that I mentioned. Dr. Ferris uh, will be the Assistant Dean for Faculty Affairs and um, Dr. Stuart Goldman with the Teaching Academy. They are both incredible. And um, Dr. Ferris is gonna take over the credentialing and appointments um, for all of our community faculty. So um, you, know, you may speak with her when, um, when you have questions about that. I did want to share, um, you know, that we have created a survey uh, that lists all of the opportunities to get involved at the College of Medicine um, for our faculty, whether you're interested in, you know, teaching, you know, throughout our curriculum, medical students, residents, there's always opportunities for precepting, and that can be with medical students or students that are considering, um, you know, medicine in, in the future. We always need help on our admissions committee. I've been a reviewer for several years. It's a lot of fun. Um, we need help with reviews and interviews. It's a great opportunity to shape the future of medicine and make sure that we get the highest quality students. You know, we have so many applicants and we really uh, put a lot of effort into making sure that we select the ones who, um, you know, will be the right fit and can be can stay in our community and um, and do all of these great things. We need expertise. Um, you know, if you want to share about your specialty. Um, you know, mentor students who are interested in your specialty. Research is a big one, um, and I'm going to let Dr. Scott Alter share more about how that works. Always, um, you know, community outreach, representing the College of Medicine, philanthropy, fundraising, whatever it is that you want to do involved, want to do to be involved, we welcome and appreciate your participation. So you can scan this. It's also available if you go to our med.fau.edu website and click on the affiliate faculty link you can also um, do the survey there and you know it comes right to us and then you know somebody can get back to you and talk to you about um about what you want to do so i did want to plug that link and our survey we have um lots of things available through faculty affairs basically we're here to help uh we help with your appointment um we're going to be processing renewals for everybody that's expiring this year so you know, I know you sent CVs and, um, you know, we, we've got letters coming and, you know, we'll be renewing appointments very soon. We have opportunities for continuing uh, medical education if you need credits. Uh, we have access to teachingphysician.org uh, and, you know, different ways of giving you DME credits with faculty development. If you're just looking to, you know, work on a particular skill, whether it's teaching or something else, you know, the Teaching Academy offers peer reviews of your teaching. You know, someone will come to the bedside or into the classroom, wherever you're teaching and give you, you know, as a peer, their feedback on, you know, how the, the session went. So lots of 
things that we offer, lots of ways um, you know, that we want to support you and help you. We're really proud to be your academic home, and we're um, you know, just proud to have you as, as a part of, of our college. And these are just some of the resources available um, through our website. We had you know, access to these prime modules, teachingphysician.org, peer reviews, uh, the Teaching Academy. We have a group on women in medicine and science. Uh, if anybody wants to join that, uh, it's a fantastic group. We bring in speakers. We um, you know, teach each other about different things. We recently worked on our elevator pitches together. It's, it's a phenomenal group. We have a lending library. If you're ever on campus, we've got lots of books related to a variety of topics, leadership, um, you know, development, academics, uh, career planning and academics, teaching, um, you know, clinical topics. We have a lending library in our faculty lounge, which is on the third floor of our college, and it's available to um, all of you. And, you know, we're just here to help. So if there's something that you think would be helpful, by all means, reach out to us. And we're happy to, you know, consider that and um, and see what we can do to improve your experience. And, um, you know, the the dean when she arrived really talked about the college being of the community and for the community. I just wanted to make a plug for our community engagement. We we have a, a director of community engagement. She wasn't able to be here tonight, and she runs all of our pipeline programs. We're always interested in supporting the next generation of physicians. We we bring students from you know, targeted high schools that don't have access to role models who are in healthcare. And we teach them about careers in healthcare and, you know, just having creative ways of getting the best students um, into our program through various uh, programs that, you know, kind of pathways that target them and, and you know, will bring them to FAU. So those are things that we continue to work on, continue to need support um, and, and help with. Um, I just wanted to share our white coat reception, which is really um, special. So, um, we have a uh, reception for our, our white coat uh, donors that want to support our students. Every new student that comes, we purchase their first white coat. We also purchase a stethoscope for them through the Palm Beach County Medical Society. So, you know, lots of ways um, to support the students. We're going to be doing an in-person reception the first uh, Wednesday in August. And if you're interested in that, um, you know, the link will be coming up. The white coat ceremony is that following Friday, and you're certainly welcome to come. We always have a really inspiring keynote um, speaker. I'll share that last year, our second year students spontaneously gave a standing ovation to our first year students. Um, or no, it was the reverse. It was our first year students giving our second year students a standing ovation. Um, seeing the students entering the profession and getting their first white coat and what it means to them, uh, there is no better moment. And you know, we'd love, I'm sure you can remember you know, your first white coat. We'd love to have you um, have you join us uh, if, if you're available. And, you know, a lot of our students really require financial assistance, whether it's, you know, their equipment, supplies, you know, the match, all of these things that they're doing, um, you know, they really need our support. And so this white coat reception and ceremony is just a way that we show them that the community is behind them. And so this is the link here. If you're interested, you can look on the website and see, um, you know, the different uh, things that are available through the White Coats for Care. Um, you know, I've been on the committee and attended the event I, every year, <laughs> um, and it's it's really a special time, and it means so much to our students. And I also wanted to share, we have our Marcus Institute for Integrative Health, um, which is, a, a, you know, available for for consultation and accepting new patients. One of the things that we do that's really fabulous is we have a wellness hub and all of these activities are free and open to the community. You don't have to be our patient to come. So even if, you know, you have someone in your practice that's looking for resources and, you know, wants free yoga, free nutrition consults, free Tai Chi, they can um, register and, you know, they don't have to come to our practice, but they can come and you know, have a consult or, um, you know, participate in any of these activities since they're all free and open to the public. And, you know, I just wanted to plug them because it's, um, you know, it's a beautiful space uh, that we have. And, and the idea was to engage the community and make our community healthier. So, you know, this is one way um, that we can do it. If you would like flyers, I'm happy to email them to you or bring them to your uh, practice if you, if you want to share them with patients or email them to all your friends or neighbors. Um, everybody is welcome. And um, these are just really, really great resources and tools um, to help all of our patients be healthier. 
I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Suzanne Bertolo, who's going to talk to us about education at the college. All right. Thank you, Dr. Krauss, and thank you to Dean Pulitzis for her earlier kind words. So it is great to be with all of you this evening, and I want to add my gratitude for your attendance at this session and, and also for everything you do for our students. So I'm going to provide just a, a brief overview of our educational programs, not just the UME program, but I also brought some information shared by our other leaders for the different programs across our um, college. So I'm going to start by expanding a little bit. If you'll go to the next slide, please. Um, start with the graduate programs, which uh, they're led by Dr. Mark Cantero, who is our Associate Dean for Graduate Programs. And as Dean Belitzis was describing, this, this slide just provides a little overview of the, the actual numbers, you know, the, the, um, the number of students who have gone through the Master's in Biomedical Science program. So over the past five years, we've had 174 students graduate with their, the Master's degree in this program. Of these students, $30,000 was awarded to our thesis students for their summer assistantships. In the um, current or the past academic year, 22-23, we've had 35 graduates from the program and welcomed 36 new students, three of whom have been awarded assistantships. Now the year ahead, academic 23-24, we are gonna have 20 to 23 students matriculating in the summer and the fall of 2023. Next slide, please. So also the doctoral programs as mentioned, this is the doctoral program, the PhD in integrative biology. This is our biomedical science track. Um, over the past five years, we've had 10 students graduate with their PhD in this program. And then the academic year past 22-23, we, we have 10 PhD students, doctoral students in this program. Next slide, please. Now our post-baccalaureate program as described is also seeing expansion and growth. So in the year 23-24, the year ahead, we're going to have 20 to 24 students enrolled. And then in 24-25, the plan is to expand even further and we'll have 20 students in each of two cohorts. So 20 will enroll in the fall and 20 in the spring. So growth in this program as well. Next slide, please. And now back to the UME program of an expansion is the word of the day. So if you could go to the next slide. Okay, 72. So I'm gonna emphasize this. This is the past class. So this is the class, the year that just left the, or the first year class. We welcomed an expanded number of students in this past first year class. So the class of 2022, we welcomed 72 students. Um, and I wanna thank everyone involved, which is a, a monstrous team of people who contributed to um, welcoming them and, and helping them navigate through their first year. So that is, we have warm welcome to all of them. And with warm welcomes, we also have to um, say some farewells and good luck and share all of our pride with our graduates um, who, who graduated in April. So these are just some slides from the, the festivities around that happy time. Next slide. Okay, so some statistics for the class of 2023. We've had, again, 100% of our, student, our graduates, I should say, were placed successfully. I'm representing 19 different specialties and over a third of our, our graduates have gone into primary care and 28% matched in programs in our own state. So we are very proud of them. All right, next slide. And they matched in some of the top programs in the nation. So this is just a representative sample, but again, we're very proud of their success. And again, thankful to all of you who helped make it happen and contribute. Okay, next slide. All right, so the plan in the fall, we are approved, as Dean Felix has described, we are approved to go to 80 students. Our class size will expand a little bit more. And so we are in the midst of that planning right now with our amazing team of faculty, staff. Um, and again, I want to thank all of you for the contributions that you've made and probably will continue to make as we welcome yet more students. So um, we are working on all sorts of different facets that go into expanding our class size. So streamlining some of our operations, modifying a little bit of the curricular offerings to accommodate a larger number of students. Um, but we're very excited about this and we are looking forward to the fall. Next slide, please. All right, again, we talked about the white coat ceremony. So welcoming our new class, I just put another plug in here. This is on behalf of our um, Office of Student Affairs. So these are the details and the saved date. Again, it's Friday, August 4th at 2 p.m. And you're welcome to attend. And it is a, a very fun event. 
And next slide, sorry. And then oh, the ultimate plan is to move to 104 students. So again, that um, application will be submitted in the upcoming months and we look forward to um, planning for that larger class size. So that will be 104 in the, in the uh, upcoming, the next year, not this upcoming year, but the year afterwards. Okay, so again, we are doing a bit just to kind of as an aside, as we're structuring the year ahead with 80 students, we are taking advantage of this opportunity to implement some of the changes in our um, curricular structure, et cetera, to sort of, if you will, serve as a dress rehearsal for an even larger class size so that we can kind of have our own um, opportunity to try different techniques of our teaching methods and configuration of sessions, et cetera. So it's been a good opportunity to sort of trial that. Um, I want to share some information from our GME programs. Those are led by our Senior Associate Dean for GME, Dr. Curtis Whitehair. And as Dean Felix has mentioned, about 41% of our recent graduates, or I'm sorry, these are 2022 numbers, 41% remained in Florida. But one other um, interesting piece of information, 28% remained in Palm Beach County, which is great. Um, so we're contributing to the, um, you know, the medical community, so locally and in, uh, far away. <laughs> okay, next slide. All right, and this is just a representative sample of our um, GME program grads from the current year. So we've had 40 graduates from our residency programs and six from our fellowship programs for a total of 46. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Alter, our Assistant Dean for Clinical Research, to talk more about our research, research initiatives. Thanks, Dr. Bertolo. Um, you can go on, Dr. Drouse, the next slide. So as Dr. Uh, Dean Plitz mentioned, one of the goals of the Office of Research is to increase research within FAA, within our College of Medicine. Um, previously, we had a lot of students seek research opportunities outside of the College of Medicine, and we want to change that where we have our own control opportunities. Over the last year or so, we've increased participation in our internal programs by that 100%, so we've doubled the internal amount of research, and we want to further increase that. So what some of the goals of our college um, and our Office of Research is to encourage enhancement, I'm sorry, encourage the engagement in clinical research across the entire college. We want to increase the output of uh, research activities from our students, residents, and fellows. And to that, we need to foster better communication with our faculty and our learners. So we want to connect our students, residents, and fellows with our faculty. And that's both our core faculty and our community faculty members. Further, for everybody within the college, both again, our learners and our faculty, we want to increase our support um, of research education, of, of teaching you how to do research, um, figuring out the processes to help everyone get better engaged. And we want to collaborate with our hospital partners to help that happen in our clinical setting. Um, next slide, please. So in the past couple of years within the students at FAU, we've seen a great increase in the amount of research projects being conducted. We're not quite at the national average yet, but we're almost there. Hopefully this year, um, we'll get to at least meet, if not exceed the national average, where we have 82% of our students participating in research, and I think that's great. Next slide. Even though our students participating in research is not quite at the national average, we're greater than the national average in our scholarly output. So last year, 69% of all of our students had a peer-reviewed paper that was either submitted or published, and that's an exceptional number again, higher than the national average. And even better than the national average was our rate of authorship of poster presentations and oral presentations at conferences. So our students that are engaged are very engaged. We want to get that number even higher to have the opportunities available to them. Next slide, please. So in terms of the faculty and resources we have for you guys, um, within the Faculty Affairs website, and Dr. Jaws plugged this a little bit earlier, we have a section for research. And this gives you how you can participate with us in research, how you can engage with us, as well as some assistance in how to do research. Um, we have a new area for clinical research processes, which details at some of our hospitals, and we're working to expand this, how to actually get your research approved, what the process is, who the approving people are, and what um, requirements are needed to actually get a project off the ground. Within the Office of Research, we're here to help you get that done. We want you to work with us, with our students, with our residents and fellows, and we want to help you get research projects going. Next slide, please. We're also further building out our website with all the different opportunities for our students and other learners and helping you guys 
again, get research accomplished. So I'm trying to put all these resources um, in one place to collate them, to make them easily accessible, so that if you have any questions about the research process, you want to help um, work on a, a grant funded study or be the PI in your own um, grant, we want to help you get that. So that information is all hopefully easily available on the website. If you scan the QR code, it'll take you right to our Office of Research webpage. Next slide, please. Something that is underutilized, I think, across the board is our medical librarians. And we have excellent medical librarians, and they're here to help all of us in the College of Medicine. Um, there's an entire web page created by the library of just how to get access to um, different journals and medical applications. Um, there are some very useful tools that are available to everyone, not just students and, and trainees, but also the faculty, where you can get some mobile apps on your phone for free just for being part of FAU, um, getting access to medical databases, um, even PubMed. Um, there's lots and lots of library resources that's available, and all you have to do is go to this link um, and get the information. It also has information about how to get your a la cards. So if you want to get the perk of having some discounts at random places, the library has access on how to get your a la card, as well as connecting your FAU ID and email. So all of that is available, and um, we'd be happy to help you connect with the library and get those resources to you. Next slide, please. And finally, engagement. So how can you guys get more involved as the community faculty members? Every summer, the medical students in their M1 year kick off research, and they've started probably about two weeks ago or so now, but in their, um, their summer between M1 and M2 year. This is usually their first entry to the research process at, in the College of Medicine. And we have a bunch of fast tracks, and that's internal projects we do with our students. We'd like to get more affiliate faculty involvement. Um, anyone that is interested in working with students or residents, please let me know. We currently have residencies in emergency medicine, internal medicine, neurology, psychiatry, and surgery. And this is a little bit outdated now. We have two new fellowships that include mentioned, but we have current fellows in cardiovascular disease, geriatrics, hospice, palliative care, um, and vascular surgery. So if you're already in those areas, we have a pipeline of interested residents and fellows that would be happy to work with you guys. And if anyone has an existing projects that they're working with on their own in the research realm, let me know. We can usually help find some learners that want to work with you guys and help you out. Um, we have a lot of interested students. We want to be able to connect them to our faculty members doing the research. And through the Office of Research, we can be that conduit to help connect everyone together. So if anyone has a question, so if you reach out to me or the Office of Research or Dr. Drowes, and she can get a hold of me. Thank you. And I think I'll pass it back to you, Dr. Drowes. Thank you so much. Um, that kind of is the conclusion of the formal remarks uh, that we wanted to make this evening. Um, and yes, we can email this PowerPoint to you. Great question. And um, we will also post the recording uh, on our website for anybody who wasn't able to, uh, to be here this evening. And uh, we appreciate you as well. So um, with that, I will just open it up. If there's any questions, we can we can stop recording. Thank you so much for being here. And if there are.